I want to, that'll give me a write for, so I want to write for somewhere important. And then I want to uh, call a function that's going to get that thing that I wrote. So it's, it's you know, a lot of work here. But, but I can do it. So, and this is exactly the way I do it. So the first thing is uh, do a small message that I don't complete. And then I do a, like a long message. Uh, I do the, I create the holes, so I create n holes in the heap using the thing I talked about earlier. And this also has the benefit of clearing out the free list because I'm doing lots of allocations. Um, so then, uh, and then I, the, the whole point of this like small message to start with is this is the guy I'm going to decrement on the free list. So then I want to put that on the free list so I finish that one out. So then what I got is a lot of holes and I start sending in these guys that are doing uh, decrements. So they're, they're, they land in my hole, I access minus two and does a decrement of this pointer on the free list. I do that 16 times and all of a sudden if I really controlled the point, you know, the data before that pointer, uh, then, you know, bad things are going to happen very soon. And then all I do is I make an allocation and, and things are great. All right, so, so what, what kind of data am I sending in? If I want to just do, show you what I'm up to, I can do that. So uh, the last thing that's highlighted is the actual address of the thing on the, where the pointer on the free list is. And then I just do some tricks. Uh, that stuff before it will, will become the heat metadata, the fake heat metadata. And likewise, on the bottom, uh, I just put in something more, more realistic. I put in the address of where pthread mutex lock, which is, happens to be a function that, that, that it gets called. So this is what it looks like, the, the, the whole attack. So this thing in the middle is, is this uh, free list that I'm telling you about. The one that's highlighted is one that's been decremented by 16 times. Then on the bottom, you can see this is where that buffer is. So you look where it used to be on the bottom row is uh, what heat metadata should look like. But since I decremented it 16 times, it's actually pointing to the data I control, which is the fake heat metadata. Then you can see where it crashes, which is in uh, malloc. Is it was trying to do the, the unlinking, and it actually did a, a, you know, store R2 into R3. So it did the like, you know, write babe cafe into dead beef thing. So you can see I can actually do the write. So at that point, it's, it's, it's easy, right? Switch out babe cafe for, for something legit and you're good. So here at this time I showed, I crashed it and it's actually the program counter is pointing to whatever I want. Um, so, uh, and, and like I said, uh, you know, I, I spent the first couple minutes talking about the, the, um, security model of, of iPhone, it turns out this breaks like every single thing. So uh, it, it doesn't require user interaction. Uh, com, everything runs as mobile, right? Well, not everything. Com Center runs as root. So here you get root and it's not sandbox. So even Safari is sandbox, but not this thing. So unsandbox, remote root, and there's nothing you can do about it. It's pretty awesome. All right. So, so what happened? I, and, and all the attack is 519 SMSs. You only see one as an end user. And if you, if you mess up, you can just try it again because uh, when you reboot, you know, if you, if you crash the thing, it starts over and it's, all, it's a clean slate. So you just keep trying until you own them. Yeah, let's see. I got like five minutes to, to finish up. Like it's only a couple slides. It's basically a demo. So uh, iPhone 2, uh, you, any page that's writable was not ever going to become executable. But then I started thinking like, well, how the heck do debuggers work, right? That's what debuggers do. And so it turned out that if you could take a library, you could override it basically. And um, you could do that using return-oriented programming, for example. All right, so so what, what does this bug mean? Uh, besides, like, I can run shellcode, which is cool. Uh, they're probably more concerned that App Store code can update itself, like, i.e., do things that Apple didn't think it was going to be able to do. Um, the dynamic linker can be changed on the fly, since I can change libraries. And what does the dynamic linker do? Oh, it makes sure that only signed libraries get loaded. Well, I can patch it so it, it loads things that aren't signed. All right, so um, one thing I want to load is Meterpreter. So Meterpreter is a payload that was originally for Windows. Uh, it's, it's like a shell, but better, because not only is it a shell, but you can upload download files, do all sorts of other stuff. I ported it to OS X last year, so then it was pretty easy to port to iPhone. And the best thing is once, so there's no SH on a, on a phone. I, I can't get a shell on a phone. But with Meterpreter, it's like I have a shell. So, it, so it's a shell on a system with no shell. Okay, demo. I'll try to do this quickly. So this is a phone. It hasn't been updated since 221. It's not jailbroken. It's not a development phone. The only thing I did was uh, I did ad hoc distribution because I had to get a vulnerable uh, app on the phone. So let's see if this works. So I'm going to try to uh, take advantage of this, um, of a vulnerable program I put on there and, and upload an interpreter. And uh, let's see here. 
So here is my the box that's going to be running Metasploit. Um, let's see. And then I have to uh, get to it real quick. It'll take like one second here. You guys aren't man in the middle of me, are you? Come on, come on. Yeah, if I, if I can't get the, the thing working in like two minutes, we'll just quit because it's not that great at demo. But okay, so here is um, so I have different ones for different versions of iPhone, and let me just put in the old IP address here. Ah, I lost my IP address. Son of a biscuit. Let's see. Yeah, we'll give it like one second here to get uh, an IP address. So I'm on my own. You can join my network. It's called Charlie Miller's Computer. You'll find it on your wireless right now. Okay, let's see. Uh, you can actually attack my iPhone if you want. 82.91. Now you all know my iPhone's IP address. Okay, so it's running, and now, uh, quickly, I'm going to start the vulnerable application, which says, hello world, of all things. Okay, so it's, right now, it's sitting there doing its, its Ruby thing. It's sending the payload. Let's see. Can you guys see that? Oops. I'll make it bigger here. All right, so, so now uh, this, this system has no shell because there's no bin SH, but look, I, I like have a shell. And then, um, so I can do things. I can look at files. I can, I can LS. I can, I can do lots of other things. I can do uh, PS. And if you know like lots about iPhone, you can tell that this isn't like a rig demo too much uh, because like on debug phones, there's like debug processes running, but here there is none. And then I can say like, so you can see Hello World is running. I can say get PID, so you can see I'm actually inside Hello World which isn't surprising. Um, I don't know. What are some of the other things I can do here? Uh, there's, a, there's another like get UID or something. So I'm user mobile, which isn't surprising. Um, and then you can also, it's real easy in, in Interpreter to add in code specific for, for this. So like you can write phone or code to do stuff specifically for a phone. So like uh, I wrote one called Vibrate, which makes my phone vibrate. Let me see if it works. Did you hear that? So, um, so you can do that. I have one that sends SMS messages, but this particular app is in a sandbox and can't do that. But if I was in, like, say, you know, some, like, say, Com Center, um, then I could just type send SMS and it'll do it. Or and I, it doesn't. I have a send SMS and I have a, a, a call to you know dial a phone number too. So anyway, this is a, a shell on a system with no shell. Okay. Uh, let me get back to the slides here. Okay. So uh, they fixed this bug that lets me disable the depth. As far as I know, no one knows how to get generic show code running on, on iPhone 3. But there's no ASLR, so you can always do return running programming uh, you know, to your heart's content. Um, so conclusion, SMS bugs are very bad. Make sure you guys don't have any. Um, you might not think you can do heat manipulation with just 140 bytes at a time, but you can. But it's very hard. Um, I should say my, my 519 SMS ex SMS's exploit uh, it, don't, it didn't work every time, so it was like one in three or four times maybe, and, and each one took like seven minutes because I would only send one SMS a minute, or I mean a second. So, uh, you know, I, it would basically like if I wanted to own you, I would have to stay up all, I, you know, set it to go, go to bed and wake up in the morning and I would have, a, you know, a shell on your phone or something. So, uh, so it's not, re even heat manipulation over SMS is not super reliable, but you can do it. Um, you can do... Uh, fuzzing over local network. Against 221, you can get a root-owned interpreter shell, all via SMS. And uh, iPhone's getting better, but it still doesn't have ASLR. That's it. Thanks.